Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the program. Today, we are going to investigate a visual glitch in Serenity OS that um, really annoys me. <laughs> so I thought we could make a video out of fixing it. So the issue is this. Um, when I'm hovering over the terminal here, you'll notice that I have the iBeam cursor, sort of the text input cursor. And when I leave the terminal window, I get uh, the default arrow cursor. Now, the problem happens when I begin selecting. So I'm holding down the mouse button, uh, and then I drag the mouse out of the window. I'm still selecting, but the cursor has become an arrow. Uh, and if I move back in, it stays an arrow and doesn't um, doesn't become an I-beam again. And this is just kind of goofy and glitchy, and I don't like it. <laughs> so we need to fix it. And it seems to me that the correct behavior would be for the cursor to stay the same the whole time, uh, because basically when I click and drag, I'm sort of in a, a drag action the whole time, right? And um, the terminal keeps receiving mouse events while I'm doing this, even though I'm moving uh, over other windows. So it seems very logical to me that we would also retain the mouse cursor that um, that's relevant in the terminal. So today we get to investigate why this is happening and uh, see how we fix it. Um, so I guess the first thing we need to do is look into um, Windows Server where the cursor is set maybe. Um, which would be, I don't know, set cursor, window server, window server, window set cursor. All right. Let's see. So who calls this API? Connection from client. Okay. It would be easier if I remembered how everything worked, but a, little, uh, a bunch of stuff have has fallen out of my head, and other people have worked on the code, so I'm gonna have to um, figure out how this works again. So we have set window custom cursor. I'm pretty sure this is not a custom cursor because custom cursors are like bitmap cursors with custom bitmaps. Um, so probably be this other API here set window cursor, which uses a standard cursor, one of the um, built-in cursors. All right, so set window cursor is an IPC API. And who calls that? libgui window. Um, so in libgui, we have update cursor, which, let's see, if we have a uh, if the new cursor has a bitmap, then we send a set window custom cursor message. Otherwise, we do the set window cursor message. Sure. OK, so that's just differentiating. Um, I think our cursor representation in libgui has like a bitmap state or something like that. Override cursor, yeah. Um, so when do we update cursor? Let's see. Not in text editor, in window. So we have set cursor. Wait, is that the only time when we update the cursor? Update cursor. OK, so it's only when you set cursor. Um, Let's see, our cursor is the same. So we ignore, if you try to set the same cursor we already have, then we ignore that, sure. Um, so what does update cursor do? If there's a hovered widget, which in our case would be the terminal widget, then we go and find the override cursor for that widget. OK, right. So widgets have this thing called an override cursor. And uh, when you move the mouse over, any widget, we ask that widget if it has an override cursor. If so, that becomes the window cursor. And I think it, the way it works is basically uh, in the window server side, 
all Windows have one cursor and Windows Server doesn't know about sub areas of Windows that may um, cause different cursors to appear. That is all happening on the client side. But on Windows Server side, there's only one cursor per window. But then on the client side, every widget has an override cursor, which maybe should only be called cursor. I don't know why it's called override cursor. Seems kind of implementation detail leaking into the name. Uh, regardless, the override cursor, when we hover over a widget, then we um, set the window cursor to that widget's override cursor. And that's what we're seeing here. So we update cursor uh, because we have a hovered widget. Or we, if we do have a hovered widget, we use that as the new cursor. Otherwise, uh, we keep the old cursor. So it feels to me like if we assign to hover widget, we should call update cursor, which we don't, which is kind of weird. I, I, I'm surprised that we don't have more calls to update cursor. I feel like is this thing actually getting invalidated often enough? So it's in set cursor, sure. But who calls set cursor? We got to find that out. Um, oh, I guess we can use the find usages thing here in C line. Okay, so bunch of kind of um, special cases where people call it, but like nothing generic. So <clears throat> I guess we're ending up here because why do we end up here? Are we calling it from outside libgui maybe? I'm so confused right now. Update cursor. Terminal widget has some other update cursor thing, but that's not related to the window. Oh, wait, what's this thing? Update cursor takes a batch. Oh, and then I have to search for like, ah, here we are. Okay, so we have that batch wrapper. Um, so we also update the cursor in widget handle event, enter event. Okay, so when you enter, when you enter a widget with the mouse, when you leave the widget with the mouse, and when you call set override cursor. All right, so now this makes more sense. I was so weirded out, like why don't we <laughs> update the cursor? So it, it, it was just at the API. Um, there was a separate wrapper API that takes a batch. So that explains that. Okay, so I think, I mean, obviously what happens here is that when we leave, we are no longer hovering over the terminal widget. So uh, we do the dutiful thing and um, we call update cursor and handle leave event, right? Yeah, so we call update cursor, uh, which will then discover that um, the terminal widget, which has the iBeam override cursor, is no longer the hovered widget. Um, and then it will fall back to the Windows default cursor. Hmm. Okay. So uh, I think the um, thing we need to do here is um, when you start interacting with a widget, like by clicking and dragging like this, that widget goes into a special state, which I think it's called the active input tracking widget. It becomes the active input tracking widget or something like that, the active input widget. Um, and that basically means that until you let go of the mouse button, that widget will keep receiving uh, mouse move events. And it will also receive the mouse up when you eventually let go, even if you let go with the cursor outside. That's sort of how uh, this mechanism works. So it seems to me like um, we just need to honor any uh, cursor set on the input active input widget here. So active is active input no. Um, 
automatic cursor tracking widget. Okay, so, so it wasn't active input widget. It's the automatic cursor tracking widget. That makes kind of sense, I guess, although I feel like we could probably improve the name. Um, but let's not worry about that right now. I'm just thinking about cursor. Cursor sort of represents, I don't know, is mouse a better name here? Ah. OK, let's not get caught up in the naming details right this very moment. Let's uh, see if we can actually fix it by, um, I guess, if we were to do the same thing here, hypothetically, just copy pasting that code, like it's not even weird. Um, and then we turn this into an else if. So we, we if um, we prefer the override cursor of the automatic cursor tracking widget, if there is one. Let's see if that works. Hmm. Okay, so I beam and no. But now it actually at least goes back to I beam when we uh, move the cursor back in. Previously, it stayed in the arrow state permanently after leaving the window. So uh, it's a little bit better, but still not good enough because I, I want it to stay in iBeam. Like, surely it does that in here in X11, right? Yeah, look at that. So stays in the iBeam state even when I leave the terminal as long as I'm dragging. And then if I let go, oh. <laughs> I was hovering another text area, damn it. Um, let me open something that's not a text area. OK, so here we have a browser. So arrow state, go here, let go, becomes arrow. Yeah, that's the behavior that we want as well. So shouldn't become an arrow until I let go. So why does it become an arrow then? Um, hmm. Well, I guess it probably has to do with, it's probably happening on the Windows server side. So um, just as I was talking about the cursor being uh, a window level concept in Windows server and a widget level concept in the client applications, the, um, the hovered component, uh, the hovered widget is sort of, Whatever you're hovering, that's also a window level concept in Windows Server and a widget level concept in the client. So I think uh, when you leave here, then this the terminal window is still sort of the automatic cursor tracking window in the Windows Server side, um, but it's not the hovered window. So it seems possible if I wrote both of the implementations, it seems reasonable that I modeled them the same way and made the same mistake in the Windows Server side, right? So we would need to find sort of the same bug just in terms of Windows instead. Um, so where would that be? We would want to find out which cursor to use, right? So. Maybe that compositor. Compositor knows which um, cursor to use. So cursor. Uh huh. So when we do compositor compose, we fetch the active cursor of the window manager. And if that's not the compositor's current cursor, then we change cursor, OK? And then changing cursor is, I guess, a matter of stopping any ongoing cursor animation, stuff like that. OK, so what is the active cursor? The active cursor is depending on a bunch of stuff. Cool. So if we have a drag and drop client active, then we have a drag cursor in effect. If we are moving a window, we are using the move cursor. If we are resizing a window, we are using a resize cursor. Uh, and here, if we have a hovered window, 
we will get the cursor from the hovered window. So I think there's essentially the same bug here. So automat uh, um, is that not a thing here? <laughs> How does this work? Automatic automatic cursor tracking enabled. Wait, active input tracking window. Oh, okay. So here in Windows Server, it's called the active input tracking window. And in LibGUI, it's called the automatic cursor tracking widget. We definitely need to unify this. But for now, let's just focus on the bug. Um, so the active input tracking window, we have, oh, we get it from the current window stack. Got it. So um, the window stack, you can have multiple desktops here, right? Or um, we call them workspaces. And each workspace has its own window stack. So um, when you are on this workspace, you have these two windows here sitting one on top of the other. Um, and then that's one window stack. And here's another window stack, the original one. So we have to actually look at the um, every window stack has an active input tracking window. That seems kind of like, that seems a little bit bogus because only one window total can be the active input tracking window. So the design here, I'm questioning the design here. Hmm. Okay, let's let's fix that. Um, that's that's a bit of an awkward thing. So first, I guess we can commit the fix that we have in the libgui side. Although I wrote that a little bit awkwardly because of the copy paste. So um, let's see how can we do this better. If override cursor blah blah blah. What's the type of this thing? Oh my goodness, that's quite a type. Okay, so M cursor. Oh, wait, hold on, let's see. Um, so if we have a cursor tracking widget, can we, how do we get out of this nicely? Auto widget is this. No, that's not what I want to do. <sighs> okay, maybe I just need to um, extract this part here into a helper because this is the awkward part. Is usable cursor. If is usable cursor widget. Uh, I don't love this, but it could be nicer. At the same time, it's not the end of the world. Uh, is this expensive? Variant. Oh, that's not expensive. We can we can do that. And we cannot do that. Okay. Const. Wait, can that return a const reference? I wonder. Why couldn't it do that? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of uh, 
This feels kind of good enough. All right, so uh, let's see. If there is an automatic cursor tracking widget, um, we retain its cursor until tracking stops. Yeah, let's let's make a note of that because it's kind of uh, well, it's important to know about. And then I guess I touched something here. Yeah, let's just. Oh, wait, shoot, what the heck did I just add? Um, dang it. <laughs> Try that one more time. I did not mean to touch that. Only this, okay. Uh, yeah, and then we have to eat a little bit of a rebuild here because I touched, um, I guess, lip GUI window or widget.h. So let's see, libgui. Okay, not quite there yet. Libgui, uh, retain the um, active input widgets cursor throughout Cursor, yeah. Um, until the tracking tracking uh, stops, we want to keep displaying the same cursor. Yeah, because essentially, input tracking. A cursor tracking like this is uh, modal, right? Um, once you start doing it, your whole windowing system is in a state where only the window that started tracking actually cares or actually gets to hear about mouse events at this point. Like anything else, I can't click on anything else and nobody else is actually even receiving mouse events, I think, only the terminal. So um, we, we should absolutely do it. We should absolutely fix it this way. Okay, so I was saying in Windows Server, the architecture is a bit bogus because we have one active input window per, or, in, okay, let's figure out what we call this because it's super annoying to have two different names. Uh, active input, uh, what the heck was it called? Automatic cursor tracking widget. So I guess we can call it the automatic cursor tracking window in Windows Server. Um, yeah, let's go with that, automatic cursor tracking. It's, it's livable. It's better than having two names. So, um, and then we also have to move it off of Windows stack because you don't have one automatic cursor tracking window per stack. You have one per, input device, like one per mouse, right? Uh, and I don't think we care about supporting multiple mice right now. So let's see, window stack. We need to get this out of window stack. Um, the active input tracking window. You, all you getters, come with me. Active window. It's okay to have an active window. Yeah, because that's just the window in the stack that receives key events when the stack is on screen, I think. That seems like a more reasonable thing, but this modal stuff does not make sense. Uh, da, 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 da. So instead, we should just keep this in Window Manager together with Hovered Window, which is... Um, I mean, this concept is on the same level as the hover window, right? So automatic cursor tracking window. Okay, wait, am I being a dumbass by doing the rename and the move in the same time? I probably am. Okay, I'm fine. Let's rename it first. 
Uh, I shouldn't have done it this way. This is stupid. Let's be good atomic boys. So active input tracking window. There aren't really that many occurrences, actually. So uh, we will just rename that automatic cursor tracking window. OK. Let's see that it's still built. And then we also go ahead and update some comments to say like the automatic cursor tracking window. Mm -hmm. If there's an automatic input tracking, no, no, automatic cursor tracking. Okay. Yup, 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 and yup. Rename uh, active input tracking window to automatic cursor tracking window. This matches what we call the um, sibling concept in libgui automatic cursor tracking widget call it so yeah um much much easier to reason about the code if we have consistent names and that was inconsistent so now we can yoink that off of window stack and then move it over to window manager. So let's do that. Um, wait, I still need to expose those APIs, I suppose. Let's put them here. All right, and then So the automatic cursor tracking window. Um, let's see, when you remove a window from the window stack, I don't think we need to do this here. Yeah, because it's a weak pointer, so it will get removed anyway. Um, when I think it will get, um, when it gets yeeted, then window manager will probably notice, although, Let's see what we do for, I don't think we do anything for that. Yeah, it just gets cleaned up anyway by the weak pointer mechanism. Uh, move all windows from one window stack to another. Yeah, same thing here. We don't need to worry about that because it's, it's completely modal state anyway. Um, so automatic cursor. Where else is this stuff? Now it's only in window manager. Okay, that's good. That's good. So now we can bring up the problem view here and just kind of, I guess, delete window stack stuff. So we don't need to get the window stack here. It's kind of nice. Let's see. Do you need the window stack here? Oh, you don't? Okay. Oh, I mean, this is just making the code nicer also. What's this? Set active window. All right. So far, so good. Oh, cannot. Oops. I guess we need to do one of these things. That seems like an excessive name. We can just call it window. Oops. <laughs> I 
All right. So now we have moved it to Window Manager, making it a Windows Server global concept. I think let's just verify that that works. And then we can finally go ahead and try to fix the bug. But uh, first, let's just verify that this still works. So it's still tracking, still have the bug where the cursor um, goes to default arrow out here, back to iBeam in here. Uh, if we switch, uh, this mechanism still fine. My C line starts scrolling like a crazy in the background. What can I switch here somehow? Hmm. Yeah, there's some some goofy states possible because we sort of um, we allow key inputs while you're dragging. Do we do that here? No, we don't. Hmm. Um. Oh, they were buffered. If I let go of the mouse, interesting. So how interesting is that? The blinking continues, but we don't send key events until you let go. Hmm. Yeah, it, intuitively, it feels like we should hold off on sending key events while I'm in a uh, mouse drag like this. That seems really weird that, uh, but let's ignore that for now and focus on the bug at hand. So let's see, uh, move the automatic cursor tracking window to window manager. It didn't make sense for this to be a per window stack concept since um, Automatic cursor tracking is globally modal. Okay. And what did I want to fix again? Oh, yeah, yeah, the hovered, uh, if the thing is hovered. So active cursor, I think it was called. Yes, here. So when we're choosing the active cursor, for the window manager currently. Um, before we choose hovered window, we should look if we have an automatic cursor tracking window. Oh yeah, now everything is starting to fall into place. So if the automatic cursor tracking window, um, I guess I can say auto window, something like that. Or do I want to do that? Oh, this is fine actually. Uh, cursor. So if we have a cursor, then return automatic cursor tracking window. Yeah. So all of these are modal states, uh, to be clear. So like drag and drop is globally modal, moving a window with a uh, super left drag, globally modal, resizing with um, super right drag also globally modal. Um, yeah, resize candidate. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Actually, that's if you're hovering over uh, a resizable window border, like here, then now it's a resize candidate, because if you click, we'll begin a resize. But uh, if we move the cursor here, yeah, it, it does not make a resize candidate out of it at that point, I think, because probably you can't uh, promote something to a resize candidate while we are cursor tracking would make sense. Anyway, if we have a cursor tracking window, and it has a cursor, if it doesn't have a cursor, if it doesn't have a cursor, then the right thing to do is not, we still shouldn't honor the hovered window at that point. Uh, I don't know why it wouldn't have a cursor, but I think that's an else if thing. Uh, because if you, if there's a cursor tracking window, but it doesn't set a specific cursor, we, we still want to keep 
the arrow going. Like we don't want the cursor to change just because you're moving over some other unrelated window that happens to have a cursor assigned. Yeah, so this makes sense to me. Let's try it out. <laughs> and there we go. Oh, it works. <laughs> and if I let go, it becomes the arrow. Very nice. So see, now we have the I-beam outside, as long as I'm dragging. As long as I'm dragging. If I drag outside the window, well, <laughs> then Serenity does not track the cursor while I'm hovering my um, Linux terminal. But uh, this is really nice. Okay, so let's just test it out with something else, like text editor. Let's open up some document, maybe the emoji. And look at that. That's really nice. And if I go here, over here. Yeah, yeah. It's just doing exactly what I expected. Cool. So let's commit that. Windows server, use the automatic, automatic cursor tracking windows cursor throughout. Um, well, let's say always use. Um, whenever we're in the automatic cursor tracking state, uh, we should only display the um, tracking windows cursor as the state is globally modal. Cool. Right. I think I think that's it. So that was a little bit of um. A little bit of a mixed bag of things we had to fix and clean up, but I'm happy with the result. I'm glad we did the slight architectural fix, getting the state out of the Windows stack. That's good. Fixing the issue and just another day, another piece of polish. Um, so I think that's going to be the end of today's video. If you made it this far, then I thank you for watching and for hanging out. I hope you saw something interesting here, and uh, it's uh, nice to be doing this stuff again. So uh, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you next time. Bye.